on the computer. Um, okay. All right, letting people in, letting people in. This is when we're when we look at our when we look at the clock and say, oh yeah, the parent meeting. Yeah. How many of us have woken up at like 9 15 and it's like, oh well, I missed it. Yeah, we've done that before. <laughs> My coaches do that quite a bit. It's kind of funny. All right, I'm still letting people in. We will start in about 30 seconds. Admit, admit, admit. Oops. All right. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. Okay, got a lot of folks this time. So happy Thursday, everybody. Um, oh, still letting people in. And then you're going to hear Marcus and Gerald in the background coming in. Um, hey. Oh, still letting people in, guys. All right. Hey, everybody. Hope all is well. Marcus and Gerald, say hi to the people. Hi, people. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so today's topic For like 20 minutes. is um in the day. Right. If you mind just um if you don't mind if you guys would just on, your phone right, and mute, to um, until you're talking that way there's no background noise. Great. <clears throat> like my background noise. <laughs> Nothing. All right. So today's topic, guys, um, and it's it's I think it's perfect timing. Um it's we've been going strong since September. But you know, every every once in a while we need to kind of um step back, take a deep breath, and then just kind of remind ourselves um kind of what we're doing what we're doing and um so this week we want to just talk about the roles and then some of the, yeah, the some of the um some of the things that we are seeing as coaches and that we would like your help as parents with so we could all work together to help uh your player so um hey Edwina you made it hi um <laughs> So, you know, at the beginning of the season, typically we, we talk about our roles and the roles, there's only four roles. Um, the roles um, are, um, you know, Gail? player, player, okay. coach, ref, player, coach, ref, oh, parent, sorry. <laughs> and and parent, so, help. right. So, you know, we, we, we define those roles, we talk about those roles, and then we want everyone to kind of stay in their lane. And what, what's helpful is, you know, understanding the why. Um, and we do this with our players, but, um, you know, with, with parents, we also want to under, understand, understand the why. What we're seeing now, um, especially with um, a lot of uh, tournament play, is a lot of coaching from the sideline from our parents and and we know you mean well believe me i'm a parent i get it i just came from my son's game i get it <laughs> um but what's happening is what i'm seeing is you know a lot of kids struggling to either listen to you or listen to their coach and you know that just becomes becomes a problem on my specific team I never want to put my player in that position. So I will just sit them when I see them struggling with trying to listen to me and listen to their parents. I just sit them so so they don't, because they have to go home with their parents. So I get it. So I, I'm working really hard on getting, you know, the kids to understand their roles. I'm hoping the parents understand their roles. I'm hoping those two videos I sent helped you understand your roles and that we, we all want the same thing. But it's really, really, really important that that you kind of let your kids go through what they're going through, good or bad, right? There's, they're going to fail some days. They're not going to feel great some days. But, you know, we're, we're us coaches, we have a line of communication. All my players have my number. They can ask questions about playing time, et cetera. So um, this call is really one of dialogue. We want to talk about um, if there's, you know, it, what's the struggle 
Um, do you need some feedback on certain things about your player or what you're seeing? Um, we're here to help you with your role with your player. Does that make sense? And, you know, go ahead, Edwina. I see you coming. Well, I was going to say, simply put, it mm -hmm. makes it really hard to coach. Um, mm -hmm. Vanessa Trigger coats everything. And excuse me, but my husband and dog are coming in as well. And they make make noise. <laughs> um, um, but it, it's really hard to be an effective coach when you have a parent and a kid's here saying, shoot, shoot, shoot. And we're trying to get the kid to run a play and be a part of the offense. You know, yeah, the parents are not privy to what's going on in our huddle nor are all the parents coaches. So so please, we cannot be effective coaches if we have every parent on the sideline coaching. And that's what we have um, with some teams. And, and it's just not acceptable. Yes. My two cents. And and it's 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 tough for the for the player. And and you know, especially at the younger ages, our goal is to make sure they love the game. And we don't need any added stress because there, it's already stressful because basketball can be stressful, but we don't want to want, want any added stress with with um, blurred roles with coaching slash. You know, we're not going to parent your kid, <laughs> and you know, we don't want you coaching coaching the girls because we have a really good thing going, and we we know how to get them from A to B to Z. Um, but it, it takes it takes trust in the coach. It takes trust in in our system it takes trust in their teammates and it's just helpful if if parents can just um support that support that so does anybody have any questions about that um questions or comments or concerns feedback um you know we want this to be dialogue um and we want everybody to be on the same page so please 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 if you have any questions thoughts concerns feedback would be great. Really? <laughs> it's okay. That okay. means everybody's gonna let us coach, right? Yeah. So I'll I'll say you this. I, I really like to share um just a story because I'm I'm a parent first. Um but you know I'm a coach and a trainer and I, I have a son that plays basketball and I go to his games and it it takes me, <laughs> it it's it's um it's a struggle because I know who he is, I know who he can be, and I know how hard he works off the court, and and then I see him I see him struggle with the offense, I see him missing assignments because that I have a coach's eye, and um, and although I'm saying other things, <laughs> you know, the only th the first. And last thing I say to Marcus every time I see him after his game is, I love watching you play. That's it. Now I have a game plan for him that's off season <laughs> that he needs to get to work. That's separate. And I'm going to go to the gym with him and that's different. But, but you know, if he's already especially feeling a certain way, that's the first thing. I, I try to be the first one, you know, he comes to. Uh, I try to, I mean, I try to get there and be that positive voice, win or lose. I love watching you play and I just give him a high five and a hug and, and that's it. And he may ask specific things and um, I just turn it back to what do you think? Um, but, but um, he's, he's learning to go to his coach for a lot of the feedback. Um, um, and I just think it's helpful for our relationship. I'm, I, if I have to pick between mom and coach with my son, I want to be mom. So um it's 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 a better role. They're not always going to play sports, and I just want to remember. I want them to remember, you know, the kids to remember the relationship that they have with their parents while they're going through this time. That's not going to be forever. So, it's huge. So I'm going to put Shantalini on the spot. Hi. So Shantalini, um, hello. She is the the godmother of Puna, who's on our fifth fifth grade team, fifth elite team, and. Uh, she had a daughter that came through the program, Kiara, who's now, how old is she? She'll be 24 in a month. Oh my goodness. So Kiara, oh, wow. came, <laughs> Kiara came to us when she was in fourth or fifth grade as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so she's been through this. Um, but, you know, Kiara used to cry and Kiara used to, she had some stuff going on. But what I appreciated about Chantelina was 
she she was just uh, she was just mom and um we were you know we tag team and 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 I see her doing the same thing with Puna kind of letting her go through her thing and being there as support but maybe you can share kind of your experience or how that worked for you um with Kiara and then how how it's working or not working with Puna I don't know <laughs> we don't know yet <laughs> it's 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 coming along with their with Puna Vai. this right. is her um first time even being in this type of environment mm -hmm. she loves it mm -hmm. yeah, she missed practice the other night because her dad was tired couldn't drive but she wanted to be there <laughs> and that's the main thing and same with Kiara when Kiara first started I think she was like oh, 10 or 11 and, mm -hmm. and at first she didn't want to go and then you know then I couldn't pull her out the gym right <laughs> <laughs> couldn't pull her out the gym she never missed practice I don't think she ever miss practice really yeah. the whole time she played right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so yeah well we appreciate your role in that so it it was nice um any questions any thoughts concerns feedback <laughs> And we know it's not an easy thing we're ask, asking you to do, but it really is necessary. And, and and most of the coaches come to the same conclusion. If I'm telling the kids to get back on defense and you're telling the kid to steal, go steal the ball, I'm just going to sit the kid because I don't want the kid to disobey their parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got um, This is Ortiz. Mm -hmm. uh, so being on both sides of, of the spectrum now, as I am helping coach that uh, fourth and fifth grade split team, um, just it's a big it's a big realization from my side because I used to be when Ava first started, I used to be like that, you know, telling her from the sidelines like you should be doing this, you should be doing that, and since I started helping coach, and I see myself on the sidelines from some of the parents, and I'm like, well, okay, I know why why it's frustrating mm. because trying to tell them to do something and then their focus is on their parent on the sideline and it definitely makes it a lot harder than it needs to be mm -hmm. at the time so and this is coming from a new coach and pretty much a new player coming into the magic system so yeah, parents, it, it's definitely hard to to turn that switch off of wanting to be a coach, especially for play, people that have played and parents that have played mm -hmm. because you see things a little bit different and your IQ is a little bit different than the girls. But like we're saying, you need to let them go through the journey and let them figure it out. You're not always going to be there to give your girls the answer as much as you want to be. Sometimes you got to let them go through it. Thank you for that, Matt, and from your perspective as both a, a parent and a coach. Yeah. And Coach Coach Astley, I think you put something in the chat. Would you like to present it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to um, step in real quick. So I, I travel around the country. I've coached for 17 years, um, the last seven years at a college level. And now I travel around the country working with different college teams. And we keep con coming up with this concept of fear. Um, and we start like basically by me asking them to write the words, no fear on their paper. And you'll notice most people will say the N-O, fear. Um, and that's kind of how they've been. Um, that's kind of their thought process when they play the game. It's like, I got to have, you know, I can't have any fear, no struggles, like no mistakes, no messes up, no mess ups. So I ask them, you know, what can get in the way of them being successful? And so usually if you look at this picture, it's kind of hard to read, but it basically says, that the things that they that get in their way are losing uh, mistakes, failures, and then repeating those things. And so what we had to do was really talk about what were the triggers of these things, because these things are not necessarily um, the root. These are just the outcomes of certain things. And so what we came up with was, um, you know, basically we came up with this concept that uh, like losing, what what drives that? Um, and it's coaches' opinions of ourselves, the doubt, parent opinions, parent motivation, parent um, doubt in us, um, peers and their opinions, 
And then when it comes to mistakes and failures, they're talking about this idea of credibility. Um, they're talking about this idea of pr approval and validation. And these are college athletes that you guys sometimes think as parents that, uh, and I'm not calling it in a negative way, but parents sometimes think that like, I got to number one, protect my child. I got to make sure they're safe from any hurt, harm or danger. And that's kind of what I tell them in this training. But sometimes when we protect them so much, or we try to give them the cues so much, we're actually holding them back to this concept of no fear. So my training, what we do is we teach them to not know N-O-W fear, but to K-N-O-W fear, to know that it exists, to know that it happens. Where does it come from? What are the triggers? And then how do we move through them to get to the things that are where we want to get to, um, which is hopefully the idea of them being better at knowing themselves, preparation and having a good vision. And so I would just say, like, if you think about this, you know, the root of these things really comes down to people's opinions mm -hmm. and approval. And so if we are feeding the emotion that comes with um, them making a mistake or them um, you know, making a bad pass or, you know, like, you know, things like that, that, that is really driving the trigger of their emotions. And it lasts not only into their high school years, but it lasts into their lives. And so I would just say like what you're, what we're doing in the one moment to make them be good at this basketball game is has lasting effects. And I think we got, we all know that, but I just wanted to let you know that I currently work with college athletes, division one to to community college and they all say these same things and where it comes from are the opinions of other people, specifically parents and coaches. Yeah. Right. And that's a huge stressor. Thank you, coach Ashley. Yeah. Thank you for that perspective. Um, and that just, you know, that, that reminds me of, you know, I'm talking to the younger group right now. Um, this is fourth through eighth, but you know, um, parent involvement on the sideline has also been, um, the cause of some players not getting scholarships. Um, I've talked to a lot of coaches that will sit with parents at a particular game um, and watch players. And, you know, if they don't want to quote unquote deal with a parent, they, they won't offer that player a scholarship. So you don't want to be the reason, you know, your player doesn't get a scholarship. So we want you to have these good habits now. So when it matters, you're in the stand, you're a fan, you're a parent and you're enjoying your player's journey. Um, it's different from, um, you know, uh, causing stress or coaching, et cetera. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to backtrack real quick. Um, we all want the same thing for the player. And so what I do, what, what, what I'm working on with my players is, um, you know, I'm talking to them because they're old enough and, um, and then I, I'm telling them, I know I'm telling them that your parent just wants you to be okay. So if you're having conversations with them, explain to your parents that this is what we're doing. We're running a play. We're we're doing this or doing that. And then, you know, that way their parents will understand better from from them. So, um, you know, I'm helping my players learn to talk to parents just about kind of the game situation. So um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving pieces especially when it's a tournament. So um, um, like we said, you know, at the beginning, rolls, rolls, rolls. And there's a tactic. I think um, one of my parents years ago used to just have lollipops and pass them all out to the parents. So that might not be a bad idea. <laughs> you know, just yeah. have lollipops at the game and just, just, and just. We yeah. had another parent who would stand in the doorway and when he got too upset, he would just slip out and then he would come back when he'd calmed himself down. And <laughs> Yeah, we've had parents that don't sit by each other because I don't know, whatever that causes. <laughs> you know, there's different strategies um, to enjoy. We've had parents that just drop off and go, you know, go out to yeah. dinner for practice or something and then come back. And so, you know, they're not so enmeshed in, in what the players are doing. So... Um, I'm glad we're talking about it though, because the sooner we can kind of get a handle on this, uh, the better will be for everybody, coaches, players, parents, um, and, and, and refs. And, you know, we, I don't like to talk much about refs. There's a refing shortage, so I don't focus on the refs. I, I will be surprised if we good, if we get good refs. So I really don't focus on the ref. I don't want the kids to focus on them being bad or bad. So I just, you know, you got to, you're, you you got to play through stuff, 
calls are going to go your way, calls are not going to go your way. But, you know, I'm going to focus on the fundamentals and execution and what we're doing versus versus the yeah. rap. You know, I go into enough. every game. Oops, I'm sorry, Vanessa. Go ahead. I go into every game assuming that I'm playing against seven. If I get a good call from the ref, that is gravy. Mm -hmm. And my philosophy is a ref can't do anything about a made basket. So we just got to make baskets and not worry about the refs. Yep. And most importantly is we got your girls. We got them. We got them. We got them. Wherever they are, we, we meet them where they're at, and we will take them through. And we have them. And we're happy to have a discussion um, if you have any questions about kind of their journey, their role, their on the team, et cetera. So, um, and John Tellini, we're going to throw you out as a resource. You know, okay. if you have some questions, she's a great person to, to go talk to. Do we have any other parents that have been through the program with another child? I'm sure we do. Feeling but um, those parents can be a resource. Yeah, probably some high schoolers. I'm looking at the thing, yeah. Mostly our young ones on right now. Oh, um, Chelsea, Chelsea, is it Chelsea? Oh, yeah. Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah. They've had a couple of kids go yeah. through our program. So Chelsea is on the sixth elite team. Her sister, who's 21, I think, she also played with us. So, and she's now helping to coach. Yeah, with coach Ashley, assistant coach on that team too. So, great resource too. All right. I hope this was helpful. Or at least food for thought. Yes, yes, yes. We're all on the same team. We are. We all want the best for your child. Team your kid. We got them. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys jumping on. Um, if there aren't any questions, this meeting is recorded, so I'll um, upload it to share. But um, if that's it, then thank you for coming on. I will see you in the gym. Alrighty, have a good All right. night. Thanks, guys.